Hi, welcome to Daydreams of Quilts on YouTube. I have these handmade, homemade birdhouses in my front yard and they've inspired me to create birdhouse quilt blocks because I've been having so much fun watching the little sparrow families that are feeding their little chicks in these birdhouses. So today we are making a birdhouse block. So you can head to my blog, the link is in the description below and download the pattern and then you can cut out all your pieces. Uh, it's a free pattern to download. And then once you have your pieces cut out, we're gonna need to draw a diagonal line on the back of the squares. So here I'm drawing a diagonal line on the squares. Then we're gonna put those squares up in the top corners of the main birdhouse fabric. And then if you want to create the um, optional second block, you can uh, draw a diagonal line on the backs of the two smaller squares and they will go in the bottom corners. But if you want your birdhouse block to just have a squared off bottom, then you don't need to do this optional part here. Then once you have those lines, we're going to head to the sewing machine and we're going to sew directly on the line and then we're going to trim a quarter inch from the line and flip those corners out and press them. So here we are at the sewing machine. Just get that lined up in your corner and then stitch right down that drawn line. And then um, we're going to trim a quarter inch from that stitch line. So just line up your clear ruler with the quarter inch mark right on those stitches and then cut with your rotary cutter. And then we're just going to flip that corner out and press towards the corner. Okay, and now it is pressed out and the seam is going towards the corner. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the second square and stitch right on that drawn line again and trim a quarter inch from the line and then flip, the line, flip that corner out after we trim it and we'll press it. So put that quarter inch mark right on the stitch line and then trim with your rotary cutter and then flip that corner out and press the seam towards the corner. So now if you're doing the optional alternative shape, you're gonna put one of the small squares in the bottom corner and stitch right on that drawn line and trim a quarter inch away from the line. And once again, flip that corner out and press it. So here again, we put our quarter inch mark on our ruler right on the stitch line and trim with our rotary cutter. And the same thing for the other corner. And trim that other corner the same way. And then we have the alternative birdhouse shape. So next we need to sew these side strips on each side of the birdhouse block. So we'll head to the sewing machine, stitch down each side with a quarter inch seam. And same with the other side. And then we'll open those out and press towards the strips. And then we're going to put that top strip across the top of the birdhouse block. 
and I just flip mine over so that I can see that intersection of seams at the top peak of the roof and I'm just stitching carefully through there so that I don't blunt the peak of the roof just be like one thread width away from where those seams meet up and you'll have a nice sharp point there as you can see here after pressing and then we're just going to add a fabric yo-yo to our birdhouse to make the door that the birds go through so to make that I used a clover yo-yo maker and I'm going to show you how to do that so I have another piece of linen fabric here I'm putting it into the yo-yo maker and right now I've got it the wrong way so if it doesn't click in place you know you've got it the wrong way just flip it around and click it into place then you're going to trim the excess fabric from around the outside just leaving about a quarter inch of fabric and then we are going to use polyester thread so here's my Guterman polyester thread because we're going to be tugging on this thread and cotton thread will break so we're going to use polyester for this part and we're going to come into our fabric but we're not tying a knot on the end because we need to have those tails there to pull on when we're done so we're just going to be following the holes in the yo-yo maker for our stitches so we can get nice even stitches here without having to think about it and then we'll just keep working our way around folding that fabric down on the inside with our thumb and stitching with our needle and thread so once we get all the way around we will leave another tail on the other end so we're going to trim our thread but leave a couple inches and then take the fabric out of the yo-yo maker and then we're just going to pull on those tails and shape our yo-yo as we go To get a nice round circular shape and once we've got it the way we like it we'll just make sure those threads are taut and then we're going to tie a knot I usually tie it two or three times Okay, here's the third knot just because we don't want that to come undone once our project is all finished and then we're just going to trim those tails off and reshape our yo-yo and there we go that's how you make a fabric yo-yo so you can position this on your birdhouse and then you can either hand sew it to your block or you can zigzag stitch around it with a sewing machine I'm going to hand sew mine so I'm just pinning it so that it doesn't move and then I've got my thread with polyester again because I found that especially if you're putting it on a pillow or something that people are going to be leaning up on uh, they can rip off so I am using polyester thread instead of cotton thread to hold it secure and I'm just taking little bites out of the fabric and then taking a longer stitch in the back it's like a slip stitch like how you would bind a quilt the same kind of idea so we're just taking little bites out of the part that we can see 
and then slipping it underneath with a longer stitch. So you can see they're a little bit longer in the back, but little tiny bites in the front. And we'll just go all the way around doing that. Or like I said, you could zigzag it with your sewing machine. And then once we get to the end, we're going to knot it off. And I always do two knots at the end. And then trim those threads and pull out the pin. And there is the finished birdhouse block. So here you can see the two different shapes. And I'm using Liberty of London fabric, Tana lawn fabric with a... Uh, Essex yarn dyed linens and here is the inspiration for the block my husband made these little bird houses with our kids one year and they have been occupied with little sparrows ever since so click like subscribe and we'll see you next time